This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your one-stop shop for creating and managing your own online brand, but more about that later in the video. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. This week I have for you possibly a shorter video than what I would usually give you. Basically, I've had COVID for a little while now, so I'm struggling to catch up. So what I have for you today is a hybrid of, I'm leaning back because all of the plants are down here. So I have a hybrid of a plant haul and updates. One, two, three, four updates, five updates. And in terms of new things, I have one, two, three, three, four new things. So around about 10 plants, nine, 10 plants, and it's kind of a hybrid of both. I think I might give you the updates first, and then I'm going to give you the haul. But as you've probably seen from the thumbnail, because I cannot imagine that I would not use it on the thumbnail, I bought something a little bit special. So I'm going to show you that at the end, because honestly, it's large. It's going to take a minute to talk about, is it not? I'm going to start with the updates. So give me one moment. So this is a very quick update I'd like to give you, and this is on the Colocasia seeds. I actually showed you these seeds maybe, maybe less than a month ago, maybe two weeks ago, something round about that. I'm not actually sure. Maybe it was longer ago. These are a hybrid of Acid Warlock and AH... Is it 0983? Can't really read the tag, and I've forgotten what they are. But I just wanted to show you the, the status of them because they're really coming along quite nicely, look. If I show you these, how cute are these? If I put my fingernail, although I do have small fingers, right next to the leaves, they're really starting to take form now, and they're starting to look more like, well, colocasia. Check it. Again, really quick update. I'm not going to linger on these, but I really thought you might want to see how they're doing. It is getting to the point now where these kind of need separated. So I will do it at some point. It's just, it's not a task that I seem to be able to get around to doing. Mainly because they're in here. They're alive. They're all right. I have a whole shop to deal with. They've been not neglected, but they should have probably been moved out a little while ago. Some of them can probably still stay in here. For example, in the corner there, there are much, much smaller ones, but obviously here we've got some some larger ones and they are getting to the point where they're kind of like flopping around a little bit. So this would be really good to take these out real soon. But I just wanted to give you a super quick update on how they're doing. It's not the same, unfortunately, as if you grow your own vegetables and stuff like that. You grow things and in two weeks you've got massive plants. It's just, it's not quite as enjoyable, is it, when it's stuff like this. Although collocation grow quite fast. Another equally cute small update that I would love to give you that people ask me about a lot and it's so cute, is a while ago. It must have been this year, I feel like, but I hold a stunning but tiny variegated monkey puzzle tree. Now, I can't remember the proper botanical name for that tree, but it's a variegated monkey puzzle tree. Very, very stunning tree, and to have a variegated one is an absolute pleasure. I know that when I got this tree, there were two of them, and one of them was going to the US, but I think it died in customs. It got held up. Not my plant, someone else's plant. I knew who was acquiring the second plant. That basically did not make it. So I don't know if there's any more of these in existence, but this is the one I know of. If you know of any on Instagram or anything like that, please tag me in them, feel free. But I only know of this one. He has grown. You're probably, you're probably looking going, oh my God, nothing's happened. He has grown. He's got a little bit of burn actually off the lights, but you can definitely say that he's grown. But I, I'm a little bit concerned the variegation might be taking over a little bit. Of course, I'll show you as close up as I can. You can see the burn there. Can I get it any closer? Yeah, you can see the burn. But if I just rotate it there, you can see where the variegation kicks in, right? It's very adorable. So it's all green on this side. That's what you'd expect. And then over here, you get where that variegation kicks in there. But if you look at the top, I'm a little bit concerned. Is it going to focus? There it will. I'm a little bit concerned that it's taking over. So it has grown. It's probably grown. Believe it or not, it's probably grown about an inch, maybe, maybe close to an inch. So it's good, but there's not a lot to tell you. And I do get asked, honestly, guys, I know you're probably looking going, what? But I do actually get asked a lot about this plant. So I wanted to give you a super quick update so that you can see it. There is a gnat flying around. I must do another bomb. But yeah, that is him one more time. There. You can see where the variegation kicks in right there. Very, very cute. And it saddens me. I've said this before, but it really saddens me that in my lifetime, I'm not going to see this become a really good big tree. So I really need to think about what I want to do with this because I feel like once I plant it, it's got to stay where it is. 
that's a big decision. I wouldn't want to see this in the hands of someone that didn't appreciate the tree and would just say, cut it down if it was in their way or something like that. That would be horrific. So I really need to think about what I want to do with this tree because I really want to see this reach some kind of potential. Now, I think I can have this for a few years before I have to make that decision. And I think in my lifetime, it, it will probably reach maybe six foot, maybe my height, I'm five foot four, something maybe around there. It might grow more. I, I don't know much about trees, can you tell? But it will get to a point where where it is planted, it lives. So if I had my forever home by then, and it was a big house or whatever, and it had grounds, it, it had something, that would be the dream, right? Then I'd plant it there, and I think I would feel okay about leaving it there. But I guess we just have to see how this goes, because I don't want to do this tree any injustice, because I think this is a real unicorn here. We will see. He's cute. He lives here. He lives in soil. He's grown. He's got a bit of burn, but it's nothing to worry about at all. But that's him anyway. He's very, very cute. This next plant... I hope I have not previously given you an update on. I don't believe I have. If I have, I absolutely apologize. I've done it twice and I did not mean to. You guys know that I've had, I've had many a problem with variegated billetai. And I mean many a problem. I've owned a few of them. One of them, as you may know, I regret selling. I wish I hadn't. Really, really sad about that. But I've bought some since. And I remember buying one in around about March of 2020. So when the pandemic kind of lifted off. I bought one and it was really, really beautiful. It's probably on the thumbnail of a haul around about then on my channel. And it was half and half. Beautiful Billetai half moon plant. And you know my opinion on half moons. I'll not go into it, but basically I don't personally think they're a good investment. I think you may struggle if you're going to propagate that is. But anyway, I had this Billetai and the leaf went in shipping and basically when it was growing leaves back, it never really put out anything variegated. And I still have the plant. It's actually in my hand right now. And I kept this plant for years and I remember thinking, right, this plant's got one more shot at a variegated leaf before I give up on it. Bear in mind, this plant's had about 10 to 12 shots to produce something. It really has. And it hasn't bothered. Well, I've let it grow and it's just started to come back with something. Now, it's not strong variegation. It's by no means impressive, but it has variegation on it. So I guess what I'm saying is I didn't lose all my money. So I'll show you what it looks like. Again, you will notice a lot of green. I'm not going to sit here and pretend it's a great specimen because it isn't. It really isn't. The purpose of this is, of course, the update. So beautiful plant still. This was the, that's not the first leaf. This was the first leaf that it gave me after dying back and, and getting neglected and etc etc it gave me this one i was like oh great well it's probably time to get rid of this plant but then it gave me this it gave me this and i was like okay oh my god oh my god there is hope what did it give me next it gave me this one you see this one so it's actually very difficult to maneuver it it gave me this leaf next i'll try and hide myself please 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 it gave me this leaf here after that leaf, it gave me this leaf here. So another leaf with hardly anything on it, the one that my thumb is wiggling. Then what's it given me? It's given me this one here. Again, very small, not a lot on it. Sorry, it doesn't like to focus today. It's not having any of it. It's given me this leaf here where there is a little bit more on it. So that's helpful. It's not ideal. Don't get me wrong. It, this is not a flex by any means. It's given me that. And then the last leaf we're on now, which is... Oh, no, we've got one more leaf. Sorry, I'm lying to you. We have this one that's gone back to all green. Not ideal. And this is the last one here where it's given me a little something something. Now, this is just not something to flex about. It's not. And it's taken years. So we're in 2022 now. This happened in 2020. It's taken that long. I'm still going to keep growing it. It might get to a point where I cut it and I try again. There's a nice aerial coming from this top bit here. So I'll let this harden off. Maybe let it get a little bit more. Maybe two more leaves. I'll cut it and I'll see if I can try and encourage the variegation. Because just leaving it, I think it's proving to me that it's struggling. So we will see. Sometimes, it, I mean, it's a bit of a gamble. Sometimes it would benefit you doing it. Sometimes it won't. And that's just because if you cut it, when a new node comes through, you're not in total control of where that is sometimes if there's more than one bud. It depends if that's going to come through on something with variegation in it. And this is, this is the gamble. So I'm thankful that there is some variegation here. There is not a lot. This is not a flex. This is not great. If I was going to sell this, I would not charge a ton of money for it. It would be work to get this looking good, if it even can. This was very promising, and I think it's steadily gone downhill. So I'm probably definitely going to cut it at some point, but... We'll just have to see how that one goes. I, I really don't have any expectations from that anyway.
If you're looking for a convenient way to create and run your own website, then Squarespace could be exactly what you're looking for. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up, using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. It's super easy to make changes to one of these templates and make it your own. I can quickly create a new website, choose a template that I like, and get started making edits. Once I'm done with everything and I hit save, my dashboard shows the second website, so now I can simply switch between the two websites whenever I want to change what I'm working on. No need to make multiple accounts. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Kaylee Allen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it from me. Back to the video. The next update I would like to give you is the Syngonium Chiapensi Variegated that I hauled a while ago. I did a big variegated haul. I snapped some leaves. It sucked. I have an update for you on this one because this one's actually been cut and it's grown quite quickly and it's grown very nicely. I'm very, very happy with this one. This isn't all of the plant. I think I have another piece of it or maybe two pieces elsewhere in the shop. So I'm very, very pleased with it. This isn't the whole plant. This is basically the base that was cut. So I took a head cutting from this and it's grown back. But this is what I've got and I'm going to try and tilt it to the camera. It's come back like this. I know. So the original leaf, one of them is here, the one with the burn. And this one was also an original leaf had a really good spread of irrigation. You can see here where it's quite fatigued really from shipping and stuff like that. That's the lowest leaf there with a little bit of fatigue on it. And then if you feel like comparing it to the original, you're welcome to do so. But if I can show you, because there's moss all over it, can you see where I chopped it? I think you can right there. This part here is where I chopped it and it has grown back and boy has it grown back because it's given me this bad boy here this beautiful half moon bad boy. Now that was the first leaf it's given me. It's then given me this, which there isn't a lot going on, but when I look into the new leaf, to me, that looks like it's gonna be quite variegated. And I'm not mad because the main stem here is quite variegated as well, which tells me that despite this being a half moon and being really pretty, I think if it was cut, I don't think we're gonna get problems with variegation because it is dispersed. So I'm quite happy with that. That could be a little bit better, but I'm quite happy with the overall appearance of the plant. It's quite beautiful. And this has fast become one of my favorites, guys. If you've ever felt Syngonium Chiapensi before, it doesn't have to be very good, literally. Um, if you felt the green version, do you enjoy it? Because I kind of like it. It's a bit rubbery. It doesn't feel how you'd expect it to feel. If you haven't felt one of these before and you're in a plant store or you have a friend that has one or whatever, again, doesn't have to be very good. Please feel it because it's really nice. If you like rubbery type feel plants, you're going to love this. And the best thing for me is it doesn't really look like a Syngonium at all. I mean, look at that. Granted, that's a bit wonked, <laughs> you know, it's a bit wonky that one, but it's really nice, is it not? Look at it. That's a really, really pretty plant. So hopefully I can persuade you that these are quite sexy because they are, they really are. I'm really enjoying these. And I think for me, this was quite a good investment, actually. I didn't know how this was going to go because I, I don't even think I was following this plant or anything. It was just an opportunity and I took it and I bought it. But I think for me, this is a very good investment already. Since a lot of people say to me, like, how do you find your plants? How do you feel about them? Do you find good investments? Do you not? You know, on that, this is a plant I would say has done me very well already. And it's clearly going to be very prosperous prosperous for me. It's a shame because this is clearly going to grow beautifully now. So what I think I'm going to have to do is I think I'm going to have to grow my own little copy of this. I think I've earned that, don't you? I think I'll grow my own little copy of this and get it to look really pretty and probably pull it. I think I could have a really pretty plant doing that. So given that it's a bit rubbery, I think it would be nice in a house because it should be tough enough to handle it. A little bit like a Monstera deliciosa leaf. It's thicker. It's not as thick. I've got one next to me as it happens. It's not as thick, but it, it's getting there, you know. It's not far off. Syngonium Chiapensi variegated. This is the progression. I would show you the rest of it. I'm not entirely sure where it is, but that's the main part anyway, the main part of the plant that you guys saw. Onto the haul. Are you ready for this? This is is going to be a very, very interesting haul. I think you're going to really like the last plant, but you know what it is because you've seen the thumbnail. Oh, before the haul, before the haul, before the haul. I'm lying to you. I'm lying to you. I have one more update to show you, and that's just this guy. This is a little offshoot from my Anthurium Delta Force, and he's so cute. He is small. Well, he's not that small, but you know what I mean. He's not full force, shall we say. 
that's the size of the leaf. So it is decent, don't get me wrong, but I just wanted to show you how he's doing. This is a cut from the one and only beautiful Delta Force. Now, as of recording this, this is going up for sale on the website, but I don't know if it's still there or not. Your best bet is to maybe inquire if it's not there. I don't know how that's going to go kind of thing. Isn't he lovely? Oh, Lord. Beautiful, beautiful plant. Beautiful, beautiful plant. And it is the real Delta Force, by the way, from USA. Now we will get on to the haul and we'll start with the little plant that's in here. So you might be thinking, what on earth? I used to keep an obliqua in this, actually, when I was growing out a little bit of, was it a bleaker runner or something? I've grown a few things in this and you'd think it wouldn't work because this is covered at the top, but it really does. It's actually really good, even though it's airtight. So I have a little plant in here and it's sat in water and it's in moss and it's just, it is what it is, but that's how it's sat. I'm going to open it so I can take the plant out for you. It's very grubby on the top. There we go. A little bit of air exchange there. So I bought this plant on a whim and I'm, I'm low-key obsessed with it. And I have to show you how beautiful it is. So this plant here that I'm going to show you is a jewel orchid. I have had some experiences with jewel orchids on this channel before. This is a jewel orchid and it's variegated and it's stunning. Now I think it is, is it supposed to be, was it sold as like a Ludizia discolor or something? But I don't know if it is. I haven't had the chance to look it up if I'm honest with you. Hence I've been really ill. But I'm going to show you it and I'm going to have you jewel orchid experts in my comment section id it for me because i'm lazy and because i know you guys know more than me about jewel orchids i'm going to show you it because it's stunning and you need to see it and even if you're not into jewel orchids i think you'll agree this is very cute so this is the size of it and ignore this it says philodendron it ain't but i'm going to tip it up and i'm going to show you how stunning this little thing is because he is the, just the cutest thing how close can i get to this without it blurring i can probably only get about that close but seriously guys can you see how absolutely adorable this is? Look at it. Look at it. Oh. Again, I won't spend too long on this because I, I can't tell you much about it because obviously Jewel Orchid not, um, you know, not clued up about these things. But seriously, it is so cute. So yeah, I, I bought it on a whim and I, I don't really know what I'm going to do with it, to be honest. I don't really know. It's just so beautiful. So it seems to be variegated kind of on the margin, if you can see there a lot of the time, but there is a lot of variegation kicking in and it's white. So yeah, if you know anything about this, know of any others, again, on Instagram, tag me in them, feel free. How do you even propagate this? How do you, how do you do anything with this? What do I do with it? What do I do with it? What do I do with it? You've got ideas? Let me know. Let's just, let's, let's keep it in this little pot until I know. And now you know why it's in the little pot, because Honestly, something as delicate as that would dry out at the shop like that if it's kept out. And I've, I've had a lot of instances where that's happened. For example, I came back from holiday to find that this beautiful orchid that I got gifted last year had a flower on it, but the flower died off during its fruition, shall we say. And I'm very upset about it. Now it's growing back and I'm very, very happy about this. See if I can show you up to the camera there. It's growing back and that's awesome. Very happy about that. That's taken like what, two years? Um, but I'm good that I missed the flower. So I want to make sure that things don't dry out. So that's why he lives in there. He's cute, but I can't tell you much more about him. Okay, this next plant, I can't remember what this was bought as now. I did remember and now I've forgotten. Is there any way of checking really quickly? So I can't remember if it was like a Syngonium or an Epipremnum or something. Borneo. I don't know what this is, guys. I'm sorry, I just don't know. It could be Epipremnum. It looks very Epipremnum-ish. I don't think it's Syngonium by any stretch. I think it could be an Epipremnum. I'm just checking the leaves to make sure there's no nesties, even though they shouldn't be anyway. So I'm just going to show you it because I don't know what to tell you about it. And again, if you have an idea on these things, feel free to fire it at me in the comments. I love that. You've been such a great help in situations like this where I just don't know what the hell I bought or I thought I was buying something and I get it in and I'm like, what is this? That's is das. What is it? So if you have the ideas, honestly, I'm not gonna be offended or anything. Please, please write what you think these things are and we'll figure it out together. But until such time, it does remind me, it reminds me of an Epipremnum, but it's not Borneo. I don't know. I feel like everyone's going to come and go, no, it is literally the thing that you bought. But anyway, it's very, very juvenile. As you can probably see here, I've still got it in moss. It traveled in moss and I didn't really want to screw with that. So I've actually kept it in moss. I have a few of them and they're all pretty much the same as this one. So it's floppy, but it's fine. I'll probably start propagating these. But this is what it looks like. If I let it show to the camera quite closely, I will hold the leaf so you can see the detail on said leaf. Back of the leaves are just green, but it does have a very bluish appearance. Not hugely. Like I would say that um, Epipremnum Cebu Blue is more 
blue than this, but it's definitely got a silver vibe to it for sure. Yeah, this is the newest leaf here in the middle. I'll show you that as close as I can get it without the camera kicking off. There, this one that I'm wiggling on my finger is the newest leaf. So you can kind of see what it is. It's very, very stunning though. Like this leaf here is older and you can see it's hardened to a really, really pretty color. I don't know guys. Again, I don't know what it is. It's nice though. It's clearly a vining plant. I mean, that we can see. It would be great if it actually just, you could grow it trailing because I can imagine loads of these trailing would look great. But judging by how this is growing, that can't really happen. And I think it might look a bit silly if you know what this is. And if you've grown it trailing, let me know because I can just foresee a really pretty trailing process with this. The leaves, by the way, are extremely thick. And I mean, extremely thick for what they are. Like very, very meaty, actually. Quite surprising. That's really surprising how meaty they are, which tells me this might be tough. It might be quite underwatering, sort of tolerant, that kind of thing. Mm, interesting. I'll show you it one more time and then we'll move on. But that's him. Very, very pretty little plant. I just don't really know what to tell you about him. Right, the next plant. Again, I don't know if it's the right ID. This is completely and utterly odd. Totally get it. Saw on a photograph, thought it was cute, bought it. That's the story. That's the story. It's not something I sell. It's actually a ginger. I know it's a ginger, but I thought, you know what? It's not fun if you can't experiment, right? And show you different things. So that is what we've done here today. I'm about to show you something you might not have seen before. Now I've got the name written down, but I don't think this is the name. Again, I think it's the wrong thing. If you know and you're into it, let me know what the idea is so everyone else can know. And well, I guess we can learn more about the plant. So I've got it written down and I can't pronounce this. Campheria Sumatra variegate. I will write the name on the screen so you can see how I've tried to pronounce that, but I don't think it is. I think the Sumatra part is questionable, but I'm going to show you it because it's very cool, as the name might suggest. And it looks a bit like this. Now, it is beaten up. It is. It is. Yeah, it is. But it's also very pretty and it's huge, by the way. It's really, really big. Look at the size of this. I'll just show you there. That's quite a large plant, guys. That's not really fooling around. So it's got variegation, but it's kind of like, it's a little bit like a caramel marble type variegation. And I mean that in the way of the color. So the color is like a little bit pinky, a little bit kind of caramel toffee colored. I don't know if you can see that. I apologize, I can't take it too close to the camera. I will try in a second, but generally speaking, this is quite difficult to do. So yes, I bought this ginger because I thought it looked cute. There was a little bit more on it and I've actually trimmed it. So I've got two of them, but the other one, it's very uninspiring. It's just one leaf. So this one is thankfully growing nice and quick. It's quite nice. I can see that the new leaf has plenty of variegation in it. It's just not something I can really show you. The variegation isn't that visible on the stems of the plant, but I can promise you it is there. It's very, very interesting, this one. It reminds me a little bit, I don't know why, of a Calathea orbifolia. I think just the leaf shape is a bit similar. I'm gonna try now and show you close up. We'll try this leaf first. Again, I'm really doing my best. That's kind of what it looks like. Obviously there's some watermarks and stuff like that on it. That's the other leaf there. Again, it's a little bit battered, but it's not bad at all. That's him. I know, weird, right? I'm kind of hoping that it is, you know, because it is a ginger, it's going to grow well. And I know that it's weird. I know it's not the norm. I know it's not the typical thing that you'd see on this channel, but that's kind of what I like about it. It has grown reasonably quickly though. I can see some new roots in here that I will not be able to show you because everything would just fall out basically. But I've got high hopes for it. If you want to know what it feels like, I, granted, I know it looks very cabbagey by the way. If you want to roast me and say it's a cabbage, that's totally fine. It looks very cabbagey. It looks like it's going to be velvety. It's kind of not. It's probably closer to a, a half rubbery, half suede like. It's kind of in between. So it's not a full suede feeling like, for example, an anthurium clarinervium or something like that. It's got some resistance to it. It's a little bit rubbery, but it's not super rubbery like the syngonium. Does this make any sense? It's, it's kind of a weird in between. The undersides, if I can sort of try and show you, hang on. There, I can sort of tip it just enough for you without it going everywhere. That's what it looks like when the light shines through. So honestly, it's quite a pretty plant. Will it stand up to the test of both England, the unit, time, neglect. We'll have to find out. But I wanted to show you it. It just doesn't like being sat in here at all. Hopefully it don't die and hopefully it turns into something very pretty because I think that's quite nice. And it's very unusual. If you had that in your house, because a lot of people do actually grow ginger in their houses, by the way. I know I might sound a little bit crazy, but a lot of people do. And you can get some really nice gingers as well. You can get some really ornate gingers. Maybe, just maybe, 
it might make a good house plant. We will have to see. So what you might say to that is, Kayla, yes, that's great, but don't you have a plant shop? Shouldn't you be getting in the fashionable stuff that we actually want? Is that not a bit silly, just playing around and experimenting? And the answer is yes. And I went and found such a plant. I don't know what my opinion is on this plant, and I will talk you through it when I hold it up, but I recently acquired a plant. I have acquired a little bit more than this one. I've kept this to grow up a pole because I want to see how it goes. But I have purchased recently a plant that I think a lot of you may know of, a lot of you may like. We will see what you think of this. But this here, I will hold it up, is, if you can tell, this is, I think it is known as Epipremnum marble. That might be what it's known as. I think that might be what it's going as. I'm not really sure. I'm going to hold it up. I'm just trying to wipe off all the crap that is on me. This is obviously the largest leaf, which I'll try and hold up for you in a manner that actually works. This is the largest leaf here. I do have focusing issues if I go too far to the camera. And then these are the subsequent leaves here that honestly are slightly wonks. I think I need to uh, put it in front of a light source and get this thing twisting around properly because really it should be growing straight forward here and it's a little bit off to the side. I won't lie to you, but that's kind of him. He's really, really nice. I will hold it next to me so I can talk about it at the same time. What do I think about this plant? <sighs> I like it. It's Epipremnum. It has splits. That's great. It's very Raphidophora-ish here on the leaves. I, if you were to say that to me, I would agree with you. It is. Certainly at this point in time anyway. It kind of reminds me of a Epipremnum Marble Queen, which I do own, but a bit more vibrant and it looks a bit more... I don't know what... I, I want to say consistent, but I don't think that's the right word. It's more reliable to stay a lighter colour. I don't think that the variegation on this appears to be as Polaroid as what I would describe a Marble Queen, if that makes any sense. Me, personally, the Marble Queen can get very, very dim when the light isn't quite up. Mine certainly has upstairs. The variegation is like a very, very, very dull cream. This strikes me as though it's going to behave a little bit more like a typical variegation. And I think it's going to stay a lot lighter. If I am incorrect about that, again, please feel free to leave me a comment. I will not be offended, but that's kind of the vibe I get. A lot of this looks a bit creamy compared to that, but I actually think this thing has grown incredibly quickly, if I'm honest, incredibly quickly. So I'm going to just see what happens with it. I will be selling this soon, maybe, maybe a month or so, something like that. Not this particular specimen, obviously. I will have others. I will have cuttings for you guys if you're interested. Let me know what you think because this does look quite nice. And if you do like Rafa the Four and stuff like that, you might like this. It could be really, really pretty for you. And Epipremnum generally, by the way, I find them to be so tough. I can't think offhand of an Epipremnum that isn't tough. I find them much tougher than Monstera sometimes. Yes, really. Yes, really. Sometimes they are just tougher than Monstera. It's quite surprising. So personally, I think most forms of Epipremnum are a good investment, whether that's to make money off or whether it's just to enjoy in your house, as in like an affordable one. I still think they're very good plants to have. I think they're really, really good plants. So let me know what you think of him anyway. He's got very cute variegation. I see why they call it marble. I wish someone would refer to this as fizzy because I always say that variegation like this looks fizzy. But no one seems to want to use that word. But there he is anyway. I'll put him down because he's a bit heavy. And I have to really practice my gains for the next plant, which I think is the last plant I have to show you. I do think it is. And you ain't ready for this one. I'm going to get it for you now. Okay, last plant and we are in the haul section. Let's be honest, you know where this is going. You've seen the thumbnail. The thumbnail is quite glorious. I know that because I've just posed for it. So I know what it kind of looks like. And it's pretty sick, is it not? It's pretty sick. So I wasn't necessarily going to buy this plant. And I've kind of caved because one, I guess if I have it for myself, I get to find out the nuances of it. Two, I went and bought another Monstera that's kind of up and coming. And I'm testing that out. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Monstera white monster. I'm looking at two down there. By the way, that's growing exactly as it was when I showed you it. It's proving to be very predictable so far. So I've been buying a few different things. This was kind of not something I was necessarily going to buy because I think you guys know I have an opinion on this kind of stuff. But now that it's here, I actually think it's quite pretty. So I'm going to show you it and I want to just get your opinions on it. It's large. I'm looking down at it now. It's very, very large. It's going to be difficult to hold up and show you every single leaf, but I'm going to do my best. So I want to show you this plant on camera, close up, 
and I want you to take the opportunity to tell me what you think, if you like it, if you think it's worth the money, is it something you would want? Because I feel like a lot of times we see pictures on Instagram and of any plant this is, by the way, you know, they're either doctored or you don't get the detail or you can't see the plant moving. And I feel like that's really important because honestly, sometimes I buy plants into this shop, right? And I think they look absolutely amazing. But then I hold them up on camera and they look crap. Or sometimes I see a plant in front of me and I think, eh. And then I hold it up on camera and it looks amazing. So for that reason, I'm going to hold it up. I'm going to show you it. And you're going to tell me what you think. So if you didn't know what I'm about to hold up, I'm about to hold up the plant on the thumbnail, which is the mint monstera. Monstera mint, however you want to call that. Even with my gains, it is still quite heavy and I'm going to try not to slap my microphone. Okay. <laughs> this bad boy here, I will have to stand back. This is the Monster Mint. I'm going to try and push this up to the camera and hopefully it will focus for you so you can see exactly how this coloration is supposed to be on a mint right there. I think if I go any closer than that, it's not going to allow focus. So my apologies. There you go. That's one leaf there. I can try and do this one, although there's not a lot on this one, is there really? We'll skip that one then. Uh, we have not done this leaf, which I can't tip up too much. I'll try and show it to the camera. I have one here that I definitely can't tip up very much. Apologies. And then in the middle, you might be able to see right in the middle of the plant there, there is a new leaf coming in. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to cut this plant, but I'm very sad about it because I think this looks absolutely unbelievably beautiful, but I'm going to have to cut it because I can't justify spending the money on this plant to not propagate and make some of my investment back. But I need to tell you now, I'm very sad about doing that. I'm not very happy about it. I've waited to cut this until I've shown you guys so you could see how beautiful it looked. It looked so beautiful, I really didn't want to cut it. Now, I usually try and do that before I show you things on a haul. Sometimes time is of the essence if something hasn't traveled well and I just feel like, hey, I'm going to need to cut this. But on this occasion, I haven't done that and I've, I've waited. It could have been chopped, but it hasn't been. I am holding him into the pot because he's not super stable. His roots are okay. They're nothing to write home about, I wouldn't say, but he's not super stable. But look at that up the back. Can you see that? Yes, son. Yes, you can. He is one beautiful plant, is he not? I think I kind of like him. I think seeing him in person and having something as impressive as this, I really like him. Now you could argue if I didn't have a specimen quite as impressive, would I still like the plant as much? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Because if you guys know, you may know, you probably do know, I'm a fan of large plants, right? That's kind of what gets me going. I like cute little plants. Yeah, great, yeah, great, yeah, great. But if I was going to put plants in my house and I could either have 50 small plants or five large plants, I would choose five large plants just because it's it's how I like to live, really. So for me, this floats my boat. What a beautiful plant this is, though, is it not? Look at it. But it's a big shame that I have to cut it. I don't want to cut it at all. I just think he looks brilliant, but unfortunately I'm going to have to. So you will see him chopped at some point. I'm absolutely going to grow one out for myself. Are you kidding me? I need to do that. And I think I'm going to. We'll see how it goes. I need to figure out what plants I want in my house as well, because I definitely want a monstera in there. Now I was thinking about genuinely just putting the all green large form in the house, but I need to kind of consider what that means for the walls in my house. Same thing follows for a Thai large form. This one, I don't know because it's supposed to be large form, I think, but I don't think it is, you know. I, I know you, you might disagree with me, I don't know. I think that's quite a lot of internodal space on there. I don't think this is large form. And I think that for the size these leaves are on my large form, like I do have one, as you may know, in that corner over there, <laughs> there's leaves smaller than this that have holes coming in. And even though these leaves are very, very beautiful and large, there are no holes. There are also no ruffles on the back of the petioles either. Even on this really big leaf that's dominating the frame, there's no ruffle. Mm, I'm not so sure about this. I think it might be a small form, but you know what? I was thinking about this. That's not such a bad thing. And it's not such a bad thing because a lot of people say that they don't have room for the large form anyway. So what I was initially slightly bummed about upon further reflection in terms of like being able to sell the plant and stuff like that, I think more people would go for this because it's small. It's not confirmed that it's small, by the way, but literally I don't think I can actually show you the petiole, can I? Can I? You might be able to get a glimpse of some of the petioles there on camera if you can. Um, can I try and get one up to the camera? There. 
Can you see that? It just got into focus. There's no ruffle at all. And this, this plant is quite large. Now, the thing is, you can get ruffles on small form when they are large. That is a thing. Sorry, I will have to put that down, guys. A lot of people say that only large form have the ruffles. That's really not true. You can get mature small form that do have the ruffles on the back of the petiole. So it's actually not an indicator. So I know that, but I'm saying even still, they aren't there. And I think a large form would have them. Let me just check mine. The newest leaf on my large form that is maybe only a large dinner plate, so smaller than these leaves, has ruffles. There you go. I'm pretty sure that's there for small form. But I don't think that is a bad thing. I think that a lot of people would, would love to have it. And I actually think it could be more sellable because it's small. It's not something I expected. It's not something I was really buzzing about when I found this out or when I've kind of surmised it. But in hindsight, I'm kind of happy about it. Please let me know what you think of this guy. Again, I'm sorry, I can't keep holding it up. Please let me know what you think of him. I think he's actually quite nice. And although I'm still not a super fan of mint things, I can acknowledge that that's actually really nice. So I'm not eating my words, but I've, my opinion has somewhat changed. So the next thing to do, obviously, is to unfortunately chop that. I will keep some of it and grow it out for myself. There is no way that I'm not going to do that. And I will start growing that up a pole, maybe taking a few propagations and building it round a pole. Doing that a little bit like what I did for my mom. I did her a variegated monster and I did it that way. I'll be doing that and hopefully it will maintain itself through propagation and it will stay mint. It looks like it's going to. It seems to persist persisted nicely. That's one of the reasons I bought it. And I guess we will just see. So... Watch this space. Of course I will give you updates. Of course I will. And we will see how it goes. So I have a few different Monsteras now to sort of keep an eye on. I do have... I might be able to grab it for you. I'll just show you it because it, it is really cute. But this is another cutting of a uh, Monster, a white monster. If I could just try and tip it up for you here so you can kind of see without getting on everything. That's currently what it's looking at. That's one leaf there. And that is the older leaf there. And they seem to be growing fine. This is grown from a node, by the way. Nothing seems to die off, just seems to grow like this. And then it gradually turns a bit greener. Not every leaf, but some leaves go like this. So very interesting, very interesting. So I have a few different Monstera now that I'm kind of trying out. I'm getting into it, guys. I'm getting into it. But alas, that brings me to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching this sort of haul, sort of update. If you like this video, please feel free to give me a like. It really, really helps. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job and I'm making content that you enjoy. And if you are not already subscribed and you would like to be, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button. I have been your host with all the Monstera and I will see you next week. Bye, guys.